Hey there, folks. I'm Eric Osberg, and I am the Rural Rebound Initiative Coordinator for Ottertail County, and we're back with another Better Together segment. And joining me today is Dr. Brett Glave from Perham Health. Thanks for taking time today, Brett. How are, how are you holding up? Good. Thank you, Eric. It's good to speak with you, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, overall, holding up pretty well. Good. So, so what are some of the measures or what are some of the things that Perham Health has done to, to be prepared for the, for the whole COVID-19 situation? Yeah, good question. Uh, so lots of stuff over the past month or six weeks, uh, we've been busy. The, uh, you know, the luxury we have here in rural Minnesota is that when this started presenting to our country and elsewhere in the world, uh, we had so much time to repair. And so we've implemented a lot of different things throughout uh, the community, as well as our hospital and clinic. Uh, some of those things, uh, you know, obviously are meant to keep the clinic and hospital staff safe, but also ensure the safety of our patients. Um, so things we've done, there are people who are at the front doors, uh, asking questions to ensure that patients haven't been sick. And if they have, we direct them to a particular area and can apply masks to protect themselves and others around them. Uh, the staff all have to do the same sort of checks, checks, asking questions about have they had symptoms related to any illnesses, doing temperature checks and so forth. Um, all the hospital staff and clinic staff now are wearing masks and um, visors to protect themselves and also prevent the spread of this. Um, we're limiting the number of people that can come through the doors, so not allowing lots of visitors uh, in the hospital. Um, other things include we've modified the hospital and clinic to have areas that are specific to people who have respiratory symptoms or possible coronavirus. So in the hospital, there's a dedicated wing that we can completely shut off from the other area of the hospital to have those patients be there and therefore protect other patients who aren't ill with those issues. Um, as well as in the clinic, we have a, a separate uh, clinic, we're calling it kind of our respiratory clinic, which would be where people would come if they're ill with, you know, acute symptoms that might be related to coronavirus so that they can be completely separated from other patients and staff. And, and so with these measures that, that Perham Health has taken, uh, what, what is, what's your advice to folks that, you know, before this whole situation, they were maybe making regular doctor visits or they were coming to your facility for other types of care. What's your what's your non-COVID uh, advice, I guess, for, for the folks that still need to use your, your facility? Well, we want to send out the message to patients that uh, we're still available to take care of their health care needs. And we think that that's vital. Um, one of the issues with so many of the changes that we implemented, you know, four or six weeks ago in the state is that we've had so much time to prepare and get ready. And we watch the news and social media and, and it's created a lot of fear and panic uh, in a lot of people um, in the community. And as a result, uh, I think a lot of people and patients are afraid to go out into the community and to come into the hospital and clinic specifically. And, and a lot of that's important. I, I do think that we shouldn't be meeting in big groups. And so doing what the state has suggested is, is, is vital. But healthcare should be considered an essential need. And it, you know, according to the governor's orders, it is still acceptable and, and we want people to come in some of the issues we're seeing now are that patients are having complications related to their health because they're not taking the time to take care of their chronic medical problems. Um, we've seen that some patients aren't filling their prescriptions. And, and so we just want to ensure that patients feel safe to come in and be seen. We've other changes we've done to to allow for patients to be seen as we've implemented the ability to do video visits 
and most of our providers are now doing that and offering that such that patients can be seen from home or telephone visits if they don't have the video capabilities. If, if I'm, let's say I'm not technically savvy, right? Like, like maybe I don't use a computer that often or, or, you know, it's, it's new to me. Um, and I wanted to try that the, the virtual medicine or whatever, you know, whatever the, whatever it's, it's, it's called. Um, I don't need you to walk me through step by step website, but, but where's a place I can start to, to have a virtual visit with a doctor? Yeah, so you could start by just calling the clinic, 347-1200, uh, and our receptionists help people walk through that process. Um, if you are able to navigate to our in internet, the Perm Health internet would also be able to guide people, or Sanford Health, uh, and if the ha patients have my chart capabilities, that's the easiest. Now, again, that takes a little bit more savvy savviness from the technology standpoint but um, we've got it peoples available to help patients work through that and it can be done on their uh, cell phones it can be done on computers it can be done on their own personal phone and any any final thoughts any you know if, the, if you were to, to to speak to to folks who live in Perham or live in Otterdale county about this whole situation is Anything else that you think is important that, that people should know? Yeah, a couple things. Um, one, I think patients should at least call or come in if they have symptoms that are worrisome for a respiratory illness. We're, our capabilities of testing patients have increased dramatically over the last couple weeks. We can do that testing through the state. Sanford also has large capabilities of testing lots of patients. And so we want to know if it's here. We want to know uh, what community members might have it so that we can, you know, prevent the spread of it. Uh, Minnesota, I, I just heard this morning, has the lowest rate per 100,000 people in the country. So that tells you that the measures that we've implemented are effective lower than even our neighboring state like Iowa, for instance, and their numbers are higher than ours, even though we have a much higher population. So what we're doing is effective, it's painful, and it's hurting a lot of people. We know that, and it's that's hard. Um, people are out of work, they're not able to see the, the family members and friends that they normally would, activities are being canceled, um, so I, I get it and it's it's not fun and it's difficult for myself and my family, but I know that these things are effective. Um, we're, we're taking care of patients and um, we've increased our abilities to do that in our hospital and all the surrounding hospitals so we can care for patients. And I'm confident with all the changes and um, different things that we've implemented that we can keep people safe, take care of their uh, health care needs. All right. Well, we again, we really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule and, and thank you and, and your staff for, for all the hard work that uh, you guys are putting in and, and thanks for showing us that we can uh, be better together. Definitely. Thanks for having me on.